Hi, hi, Fuzzy Pasha. So, hi, Abak. Or should I say Dark Abak? Because you showed that Carcassonne style game, and I really can't lose any more sleep. I take it you're enjoying Dorf Romantic? Let's go ahead and uh, consider our military options. They're not going to stop us. Uh, what have they got there, though? Combat Freighter, Drone Tender, Kite, and a Shuttle. Launch another raid. Now, we've got 221 available cargo space. Quite a lot more fuel space, though. Fuel itself is a commodity. I could not hold this much supplies. Uh, so what I want is something that very low space, but high value. Or I could just go all in on the supplies. Let's uh, dial this down until we've only we're only grabbing about two. Well, 150. That's fine. The rest then on fuel. We're not going to get much because they don't. They're not producing much, so we're not going to have an opportunity to pick up too much but this is going to allow our fleet to operate for a while now this is going to push this settlement into complete instability it's not going to destabilize the settlement though that requires them to be at zero st stability for a while well now that i've told havoc in no uncertain terms that carcassonne game i can't remember what it's called is a great introduction that i appreciate but also blame my lack of sleep on him hi chad <laughs> hope everyone is having a great day yeah, I, I'm fairly certain you're, you're talking about Dorf Romantic. Right, there we are. Light uh, light casualties are predicted. Let's go ahead. Lost another 13 Marines. Uh, we gained another story point, so we, we're gaining experience quite nicely. All right, let's pick through the spoils. There we are. Very nice. Indeed. I approve. That is going to keep us going for so long. That's almost a year's worth of supplies with our current fleet. Obviously, repairs and such will change that. But they're now down to quite a lot. Uh, they, they are deep in the negatives. It can't drop below zero, but it can take time to recover. Now, with this, it will go down by one point every three months. So, they're at minus nine. It's going to it's going to be half a year before they're technically at zero stability. It is going to be 9 months before they've got stability one. Try not to force a station into a point where they're going to be completely unstable for more than a year. Because at that point you run the risk of that station actually becoming destabilized and if things don't improve for that station reasonably quickly after that point they will completely destabilize and become un what was it decivilized or uncivilized basically the station shuts down so you would you'd lose your your potential uh raiding base so we're just we're gonna leave it at that we're not gonna mess around with them any any further um you can go into the com directory if you want i don't think they're gonna want to talk to me though so we're gonna leave Right. So with that, we have now got a cargo hold full of some interesting stuff. Let's have a look. Where would be the best place to sell this? <laughs> well, the the pirate in Uma. They oh sorry no no they've got an excess rather Sphinx for hegemony for two hundred eight. It's not bad considering we got it for free. Um, what about you? Thule will buy that for the best price. How about fuel? We don't need much fuel for our fleet right now. Uh, the pirates are happy to pay well above standard price for fuel. Because no one's willing to trade with them. Uh, supplies. The Umbra pirates are willing to pay quite a lot. The Ludic Path are willing to pay quite a lot. I'm not too really looking to sell my supplies though, I'm going to be honest. All right, let's go and chat with the independents down here. We're doing uh, a bit of work to improve our standing with the independents overall. We'll just pass through here, and then we're going to start using the sustained burn. Hello, Razorix.
Uh, your fleet approach. Oh, it's a, an abandoned terraforming platform. It isn't. Sorry, I thought this was an independent station. Uh, colony conditions. This station is abandoned. Can I take it? I wonder, can you do anything with these abandoned places? A few looted hulks. The atmosphere reads out as thin, but there is sufficient power from hardened passive collectors to run basic life support and storage functions. I guess you could just store things here. Yeah, I think that that's it. You can just store things in these places. Interesting. Uh, either way, I should turn my transponder on because I am now deep in... Uh, in their territory. Oh dear, they spotted me without my transponder on. Wow. Okay, the only way we're not getting a f getting into trouble here is to burn away. Uh, go. Are we burning away? We're at 15. No, they're still faster. Damn it. Alright. Okay, well, there's no point in running. I may as well just take uh, take our medicine. Running with the transponder off in hegemony space is against the law. Don't think you can just turn it back on and avoid our attention. You're here by order to submit to a cargo scan. I can talk my way out of it. Or allow the scan. I've, I've got no reason to, uh, to not allow the scan. You wait for the cargo scan to finish. After a brief wait, the hegemony fans pick it to transmit the scan results. No con contraband or suspicious cargo found. Lieutenant Grant Christian looks vaguely displeased. Hmm. If I catch you running with the transponder off again, you won't get off so easily. The comm line is cut before you have a chance to respond. Now, we lost a little bit of standing with the hegemony, but it, it wasn't terrible. Now, one of the things to be aware of with that is that currently the hegemony are welcoming to us. And as a consequence, your name is known to some high-level of officials in the hegemony, and harassing you is therefore a more risky endeavor for local patrol commanders. You can you can be a, a like a a barefaced smuggler in this game as long as you're doing enough quests for for a faction and you you get really high up there. It's like they they'll catch you running arms like you know because generally heavy weapons are are an illegal thing. They'll they'll find you with it and, and, and it's a case of you see. I sell weapons to the enemies of your enemies. <laughs> Some some uh, shadowy faced general will, will arrive uh, and, and and have a have a word with the uh, with the arresting patrol officer, and I'll be let off scot free. All right, uh, I don't want to mess around with the comms, right? I want to go to Jangala Station, please. What kind of game is this? Is it like Stellaris? No, it is on a 4X. It is much more like uh, like Mountain Blade. Uh, or Space Rangers, if you're, if you're aware of that game. Though the scales are different. The, the scale of this game is so much more like Mountain Blade. But with Stellaris, it, 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 it is is much more macro scale. This is a tighter scale. But it's not so small as a single person, a single ship. You are a single person, but you run a fleet. Hey, Shadow Star, how you doing, buddy? Thank you so much for the 12 months. Yeah, not exactly mangled pork. In a few minutes, someone is going to knock on that door. They will be higher ranked than you. They will thank you for your work. And then they will order you to let me go. Lord of War. I like my way better. Uh, right, let's see about A, repairing my ships first and foremost, then training goods. I want to see what kind of prices they're offering. 110 here, but I can get 208 3.3 light years away. 12 here, or I'd have to go up. I'd have to go north. Uh, is there anywhere north that's offering? Oh, there's Zagan. Valhalla, maybe? No. Nothing going on there that really matters to me. I'm probably going to be moving more towards uh, Naraka or Samara to deal with that. 
I would like to replace some of my uh, mercenaries, though. Let's uh, grab eight, and I'll show you how this affects things. Got those eight there, confirm. Minus 15. Now, if I take this up by an extra 30, it's take me all the way to 200. It's now only minus 30, but worth it, I think. Uh, as for the weapons, we've got some nice weapons here, actually. I care to move the metals around. I don't really care to move the metals around. I'm just going to sell those. But let's have a look at the ships that they've got on sale. But yeah, I, I I really liked Lord of War. That that was a that was a, a film that, that and again it's it's a Nicolas Cage film. It's, it's the thing with Nicolas Cage. He, he literally takes. It feels like he takes any role that is offered to him. So as a result, he's in some awful films. And he's in some great films. And he's in some films that are so awful, they're great. It, you know, it, it's such a such a crazy breadth of work. But, uh, yeah, I liked Lords of War. It, uh, made, it made you think about a lot of things. Now, what is our current fleet like? We've got a Dram and a, uh, and a Faith in Class. It's quite nice. What we lack, we've got a, a tr uh, civilian transport, so a troop transport, effectively. Larkin, thank you very much for that raid. That was very kind of you. Hello, raiders. You join me while I'm considering the possibility of purchasing a new ship. Getting a freighter would be good. Because as you saw there, we had to dial back my, uh, my particular raiding opportunities based only on how much cargo I could carry. The Raiders have arrived at, arrived at a good time while I'm considering my options to improve my raiding. Um, however, well, we do not want, we do not need a Colossus Heavy Freighter. Or for that matter, a Prometheus Tanker. What a fantastic name for a gigantic fuel tanker. What were you playing? You were playing Warhammer Vermin Type 2. Very nice indeed. I've been looking at that recently. There's another hammerhead. There's the enforcer as well. I don't think we're looking to pick up a combat ship, though. I think it is it is literally a freighter. The hegemony military are not willing to sell as much. I would love a Valkyrie, though. As far as I'm aware, that's the only ship that has the ground support package. It's the only only one I've seen. The Starliner civilian transport. That can hold a lot of crew. <laughs> With our money, though. Ooh, adventure cruiser. It's a civilian great hull. Tough, depend uh, dependable, and not overly expensive. Uh, not overly expensive. It's 100,000 credits. Venture class cruisers are usually constructed by private corporations for escort duty or by small non-aligned worlds for system defense. Uh, the Enforcer... Ooh. This is one of the uh, 14th Battle Group hulls. Built to the specifications of the 14th Domain Battle Group, which founded the hegemony, this vessel is a prime example of the Domain Navy's decisive battle doctrine particularly exhibited by the series of radical structural modifications performed using pre-collapse industrial technology. Uh, Mangled Pork is the only person in chat that I know for... Oh, actually, no, Noin as well, um, that I know for sure has, has played Stars Without Number. Uh, but this is definitely has a Stars Without Number theme to it. Very, very similar kind of, kind of idea. You know, there's the, there's the pre-technological collapse... And when it happened, space travel became extremely difficult or just not possible. And as a result, humanity sort of rebuilt. But just, you know, you occasionally find examples of pre, uh, pre-collapse technology. And they are generally just better in every measurable way. So it starts without number, without science. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> no, I was actually about to say that. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. The, the, the domain were the human empire. Following the, the golden age of space exploration after discovering transluminal, 
um, transport. Dromain set up Stargates. You know, we're we're in the Persean sector. Um, I I'm not sure what galactic cluster we're in, but it's not the normal one. Uh, it's not it's not the Milky Way galaxy that is. Um, but the <laughs> just it's such a funny funny name, Milky Way Galaxy. So we don't know. But uh, anyway, um, the extreme distances that those gates allowed for allowed uh, you know uh, you to move across those those distances that shut down and we got cut off from the domain but the domain did come here with the 14th battle group uh, and the soldiers and officers of the 14th battle group are basically what formed the the faction he the hegemony in a way And yeah, the, the, the FTL in, in, in Stars Without Number really connects with this as well because the superluminal travel, the, the, the limited superluminal travel you're able to do this is basically punching a hole into hyperspace and transversing. You can sort of think along, along a fourth dimensional axis into hyperspace and then you can punch back down at certain gravity wells. But uh, we've been cut off from the domain for like 206 years. That's that's how like this is one of the things. Is the colonies here are not big. They're like tens of millions are living on a planet. Like the, the biggest colonies are like maybe hundreds of millions of people live there. There are not many people in this sector. It was only just kind of being being established when everything went dark, and then all of a sudden. The uh, the in the massive like you know manufactorums were trying to ping back home and make sure you had a a valid license for building the the amazing future tech that they were capable of building, but without the 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 the, the stargates couldn't call home. And so it was like, nah, can't validate. No, no online functionality detected. Cannot build the ultrameds. You'll just have to eat dirt. I I honestly cannot get over this is probably the thing i love the most about this game all of the game mechanics amazing 10 out of 10 but the fact that that humanity went into a dark ages for 200 years because rampant drm happened is quite possibly the best thing ever so hilariously amazing uh, right, as for the ships, though. Yeah, no no real freighters here. But that, that is tempting. 14th Battle Group, really tempting. Um... Could pick up a salvage rig, but I, I don't think I need the extra salvage gantry right now. No, I, I think ultimately we're gonna we're gonna pick up one of the the buffalo freighters. This ship is on the Hegemony auxiliary list, and as such, its systems have been upgraded to military standards and a rigorous schedule of servicing enforced enforced with the expectation that it can be pressed into military service during emergencies. The go-to choice for medium cargo hauling in the sector, the Buffalo class freighter exemplifies the load and prey principle prevalent in sector shipping. <laughs> load and prey? What? It's got active flare launchers. It's got a civilian grade hull, but militarized subsystems already installed. And it, they're probably built into the hull and can't be undone. And that means I don't pay, um, pay ordnance points to have them, which is nice. It's only got one small energy turret. Uh, what's the cargo space? 400. That is quite a lot. That's that's over half of what I've currently got, so. Ah, back. I looked at the planet in the background and thought back to the real trees conversation last time. My thoughts that went to all that green 
algae and plastic replicas of trees, all thanks to the work of the dapplings. Yeah, pretty much. There, there are no trees in this sector, or, or trees are shockingly uncommon, at the very least. That being said, you know, there are lots of worlds, and only some of them are even close to, to uh, you know, uh, habitable. So, yeah, it makes sense. They may, they may just be a great, great uh, limit on, on, on trees. Or, or tree species don't, you know, wood. There might be plants that, that, that have no wood analog in, in, in an alien uh, biosphere. Uh, but, yeah, that could just all be uh, algae for all, all we know. Or green sand. Would salvage freight to give us more salvage battles? Yes, but we're already getting very good salvage returns. So I think we're going to pick up a Buffalo Freight. Yes, it's 47k, but... Uh, and some of that is going to be taxes, but I'm, I'm okay with that. All right, then let's have a look at you. Now, in terms of the freighter, I'd like the freighter to... be just after the troop transport on my list and let's refit it it's only got a front facing energy turret interesting but it does have a shield only 120 degree arc though hmm. i wonder if the shield rotates does it have a does it tell me if the shield rotates actually i think it'll say it's an omni shield if it doesn't because an, an an omni well yeah, an Omni Shield still has uh, has an arc, I think, uh, and th that just is how much of the of the ship it'll it'll cover. But it always, you know, it doesn't rotate. It's front facing effectively and, and grows from there to try and encompass it all. I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure exactly if you can have a look in here and see. Oh yeah, defense Omni Shield. So it is front facing and and it and it spreads out from there. Yeah, see, there we go. Whereas a ship with a shield that rotates is Omni Shield. Yeah, there we are. Oh, well, actually, that, that one does say a front shield. So I wonder. I wonder what the difference is then. Or is Omni Shield the shield that rotates? It might be, actually. Yeah, that would that, that would probably make a bit more sense. Okay, so it, its shield will, uh, will, will work with the assumption that its shield rotates around. Uh, I'm going to have to buy a mining laser to put on it. If I want one. Do I really want one? I mean, I would love to put a point defense on this, but... Go on, then. We'll pop a point defense on it. We've got militarized sub systems there, though. Can I take that off? No, it's, it's built into the hull. So with that, I'm going to... Plonk down unstable injector, so it's a little bit faster. It's still pretty slow. Uh, do I have anything that would be able to help the shield out? I don't. Um, no. Well, we barely need any flux, honestly. Flux dissipation is is silly. I will put a couple of points. We'll get it over 100 flux dissipated. With our shield up, we'll build 35 slu fl uh, slux flux a second. And if we're firing our point defense la laser consistently, that'll be 45. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's not a biggie. Uh, the, I am going to pop down some additional systems on this thing because we've got a bit of room. Let's have a look. What did I pop in these? Stable injector, reinforced bulkheads... I mean, I can pop in reinforced bulkheads, I guess. Yeah, sure. Let, let's make it so that if it does get clonked, it's going to be more likely to be repairable. Now, the other thing I could have put in, high-resolution sensors. That would, that would make our ability to, to discover enemies a little bit easier, or survey equipment, which would make it cheaper for us to... Uh, survey planets. It is tempting. But that does give us so much extra hull. No, let, let, let's let's focus on defense here. There we go. 
Surveying equipment is good. Yeah, I, I do. I do agree. Yeah, exactly. If my if my freight is in combat, something is wrong. It is is a reasonable way of putting it. But that's why I put the unstable injector on it because if it's in combat, it needs to be running away. That's why I tried to speed it up. But you are right, actually. Let's let's go ahead and and work with that, and we're gonna pop down. Either surveying equipment or high resolution sensors. Let's put the surveying equipment on it. Reduces the heavy machinery and supplies required to perform surveys by 5, 10, 20, or 40, depending on the hull size, down to a minimum of five each. You can never drop it below that. Uh, let's let's go ahead and clonk you in there. Oh yeah. Uh, on that note. Yeah, sure. We'll pop. We'll pop some extra surveying equipment on you as well. There we go. We can't pop it in in there, sadly. Currently, we're reducing the cost by twenty. What about our troop transport? Yeah, we can't put it on there either. I'm kind of feeling like getting rid of this freighter, though. Well, that being said, it's 100 cargo capacity. It's, it's not too bad. Okay. Right, well, we're going to need a name for the new ship. So, you know what's going to happen. We are going to go ahead and, in a moment, turn on the redemption of the naming game. If those of you who... who if there are still some of you here who didn't spend all your channel points of voting for star sector to be the game that we played now is your chance to get your name added to uh to one of the ships in our fleet a pretty important ship actually considering we are trying to get rich by raiding pirates i know people still have dapper ducats well some people have joined after the game started so i imagine there are a few all right let's go ahead and open up the name request Let's have a look. Pomp. Okay. Three people managed to get in. Well done. It's going to be Dire Fan who wins. And Jake Toady and Arden Drub, I'm afraid you were just a little bit too slow on the draw. But don't worry, your points have been refunded. Let's go ahead and rename you. It wasn't even a warning, sir. I am displeased. I totally gave you a warning. I told you loads. There's no point in me doing a countdown because it'll be delayed. Pomp. All right, let's uh, just redeem that. Yoink. All right, well done. Don't worry, Hi Kaiser. You'll get in there eventually. I'm sure it'll happen eventually. You know what? I'm going to call this a survey freighter. That'll give me a little bit of an idea of, of how they're all set up. I'm not going to change the HSS. I guess that's Hegemony Starship. ISS, Independent Starship. Yeah, I, I, I suppose it would be IS, ISS in that regard. Um, we don't yet have... Until we set up a faction, we're not going to have a uh, a designation for our, for our vessels. Do I have... Oh, I do now. Hmm. I need three points. Let's pop a Vulcan cannon. Oh, no. I need four points. Let's pop a Vulcan cannon on this. Decent point defense that way. I don't think we need a missile. If I had a Salamander... I do have a Salamander. I could... Mm, I kind of want the Salamander for other things, though. I really do. I feel that having my Shrike with a means to shut down an enemy's engines would be quite nice. A breach SRM pod, a heavily armored and fast missile with good guidance, and a small specialized anti-armor warhead. Um, and I alert rocket pods, a Reaper class torpedo, or quite punchy. Uh, hammer class torpedo. Harpoon. Sabo. 
Fires a second stage spread of high velocity kinetic penetrators when in range, heavy damage to shields, and massive EMP damage when impacting on enemy hull or armor. Difficult to stop with point defense. I mean, might be worth it actually. There's a couple of them there. But this is a medium missile launcher, so popping something other than. Other than a medium missile is wasting the hard point. Uh, I don't think we're going to waste that hard point. Same there, really. These, however, are smalls. I could go with the uh, Sabo. Hmm. It's only, it can only fire a single, single shot, though, which is kind of sucky. Um, versus this, which currently has three. Uh, tempted, actually. You know what? Sure, we're going to swap these out for Sabo. And as a result, we've got a little bit of uh, extra we can pop on. There's nothing we can afford there, so I guess I'm just going to increase the, uh, the capacitors. Right, I'm going to quickly show what the Sabo, uh, how the Sabo works and why I kind of like it. I uh, would like them to be alternating, yes. Confirm. I could have these on alternating as well if I really wanted to. Reduces the amount of flux you're going to output. Hmm. Does this have recoil? Is there a way to see if a weapon has recoil? I like a fine evening to you, sir. And to chat too. Hello, uh, Xanthophile. How are you doing? Uh, there are probably a few... Uh, a few ships that are primarily missile boats here. Alright. Uh, I've got a deployment point of 10. Let's find something equivalent. Uh, we got you. Sure, let's uh, pop you in there. It's close support frigate. Close support... Uh, sorry, close support destroyers. What are you armed with? Arbalast auto cannon, harpoon, point defense lasers. Exactly the same, really. Okay, sure. We'll deploy you. Okay, so I guess the recall is what causes the aim to get worse over time. Shields up. Hello! All of the DACA, all of the time, please. Right, we need to back out. I would like to see what this does. Don't hit... Oh, my lord, really? I only have two of those. Fine. Launch. Of all the things you ha you could do. Shields up. All the DACA. Shield down. I am at almost full flux right now, but... You know what? I'm gonna let my uh, point, uh, my rail guns continue to mess it up. I think I've broken its. Oh no, it's got it's got its uh, rocket still. But I've done a decent bit of damage there. Shields up. Keep the pressure up, rail guns. Almost, almost fluxed out there. Get it. More railgun fire, please. And pop. Yeah, that wasn't a good uh, demonstration of the Sabo SRMs, but... Uh, the man, I saw that coming. It was hilarious. It wasn't to me. I was like, yeah, let's wash this awesome cool weapon I've got. Pop. Asteroid. Great. Oh, well. But yeah, that, uh, that didn't go too badly. Okay. Let's repair our ships. 
Uh, we could go down to the Darkside Bar. Or I could go elsewhere to try and shift this. I'm not going to hit that, that pirate station again. Because, frankly, I don't want to destabilize it. So let's go down to the Darkside Bar. Uh, a nervous cadet holding a drink approaches you. Um, Captain, my, uh, I mean, the man over there wants a word. The cadet glances at a dark corner of the bar. At the end of the bar, a rakish man is met by a variety of low-life characters who scurry away almost immediately. Giving orders, perhaps? Let's talk to the, the officer. The man sits in the dark. He's dressed as a common tech, but speaks as though he holds, or has held, command. Captain Carolinas Asimov, he says. My superiors recognize that your unique talents could serve our faction. There is no drink on the table. I know inv invitation to sit. We need an agent extracted from a, from a colony on Sudan. A flagged task force cannot do this due to political considerations. Our offer is 39,000 credits. The oppo may be expecting you. We have intel on their defenses. The man places a data pad on the table for your inspection. You quickly review the contents and estimate that you'd need around 200 marines to carry off the operation. Um, that's all the marines I have, so I'm not really looking for that one. I'm going to decline it for now. Uh, what does the rakish man at the end of the bar want? The man watches your approach. You watch. Uh, you want something in the business, is that right? He says, amused at your audacity. Let me give you a job so easy that uh, any rad adult spacer could manage it. But, he shrugs regretfully, it's a real shame how many of them just can't follow instructions and end up getting tossed out an airlock. He laughs like it's a good joke. It wasn't. Deliver the item to the specified location in Delta Sessine system, 20 light years away. He flips a tripod out of his coat. The display shows a hard copy book made of paper. This is it. The reward is 76,000 credits. Don't be seen making the drop, and don't tell anyone about it. 20 light years away is a good distance. This is one of the pirate factions. If I do this for them, then, you know, it's not going to affect my standing with anyone else, but it will affect my uh, my standing with, with the pirates. It'll go up. So I'll have something to lose when I raid the pirates. A book made of actual paper from trees. I know. The big consideration, though, is six, uh, 76,000 credits. The 20 light year trip. Okay. We'll do it. 120 days to complete. Alright. Let's bring up... Uh, Intel. Important. Dead drop. Yeah. It's a very long way away. It's nowhere near any hab uh, habitable, or rather habited, inhabited sectors. So refueling up there is going to be difficult. Alright. So we're going to need to stop off at uh, uh, Nachiketa uh, to pick up some fuel. Okay. We can do this. Uh, there is no longer a pirate presence in uh, Galatia, sadly. But we could possibly swing up and bother the uh, pirates in Karas. We'll see. Alright. All right, let's have a quick look at the starscape. Looks like the route we're going to want to take is up through Naraka over towards the uh, probably Gamma Piscum and go on straight up to the Sassine Nebula. Beta Sassine uh, and Zeta Sassine. But we want to go to Delta Sassine. I believe it was Delta Sassine. Yeah, we're going to need more fuel. This is the ring where we can we go there and come back on the field that we've got. This is the ring. You go there, it's a one-way trip. Oh, well, I mean, at least you're not coming back to your point of origin on that trip. All right, let's burn. Wait, someone mentioned trees? 
heresy. I know. Jump into hyperspace. Wait a second. Who be that coming at us at high speed? There's a lot of people. Uh, Clyde class shuttle. Let's uh, cut the drive. Uh, sure, we'll salvage this. 160%. A little bit. Traveling. Traveling. Trader, but traveling, not actually carrying any cargo. Alright. Let's try and avoid the the storms where we can. Just slows us down. Smuggler is moving from Sphinx to Gilead. Want to be yes. Next to Pontus is where we want to go. It's where the, the academy is. That nascent gravity well is basically there is something there that is almost uh, massive enough to create to to weaken the the sort of membrane between hyperspace and space and create a, a, a stable jump point. But pop the transponder on. We're not actually uh, raiding anything right now. Right, let's go to our good friend. I'm off. Have a pleasant evening, everyone. Take care, Clark. I really hope you, you have some luck getting the multiplayer Stone Half game going, mate. Alright, let's go ahead and call Alvis. Oh, Captain. The non-linear mathematics department wanted me to give you their thanks for returning Academician... Uh, well, you won't remember the name. But they're all very pleased to get back to work on the... Uh, well, I shouldn't really say. Sebastian looks nervously around, then clears his throat. Trust me, they're very pleased. And it's due to you. Good job. We're building uh, a good rapport with the independent faction, actually. Uh, up to 931 with our contact there. With our handler. Uh, I'm not going to pick up any more jobs. We've got quite a few for you right now. So we're instead... I'm going to immediately move on to Naraka, where I do believe the best opportunity for getting fuel. Yes, the very best opportunity for picking up fuel is over there. That's bad. Uh, what's the price of the game? It is 15 US dollars, or, you know, roughly your, your equivalent, whatever. Whatever your uh, your currency may be. You have to buy it through their website, specifically. And the website does... does <laughs> it does kind of give off early 2000s vibes. Don't worry. It's not a scam website. <laughs> They've just got other priorities, I guess. It's not available on Steam, but there are plans to bring it out to Steam once the game is in a in a more complete state. Ooh, that's a very big uh, fleet there. That's uh, oops. Turn off. Well, that's unfortunate. Let's uh, cut my burn and then change direction. Thank you. I was paying too much attention to how much money we just made. That stipend is nice right now, but it's not going to last forever. Did you know you can speed up time in long travels? Yeah, you press shift. I just don't like doing it. Uh, well, I will on, on some some occasions. Uh, where are we? We want to go in here, so let's head over. And uh, let's jump in. Turn the transponder back on. I felt like I was signing up to a porn subscription when I bought the game. <laughs> but that's the first time someone said that. <laughs> okay. Wow. They do go through is it BT Micro or something like that as their, their payment service provider. But yeah, it, it, it's very clear they made their own website. Um, and yeah, like I said, their, their priorities are just elsewhere. Uh, the, the website, it, it, I guess the game is the priority, not, not the website, but it will eventually be coming to Steam from what they've said. Right, I 
guess. Yeah, sure, you can have this for 214. And you can have the metals too. Paying a hefty bit of uh, fee there. See if we can't get a couple of 250. Okay, still no suspicion. That's good. See if we can't get another 100. Yep. Let's keep going. Another 200. Still no suspicion. Let's grab it all. Ah! Oh, well, it's just minimum suspicion. That's fine. That's not going to cause any, any big issues. Uh, as for supplies, though, mm, might want to... Oh, uh, actually, we've almost got a year's worth of supplies with this. I don't think we're going to struggle too much. But we may want to pick up some extra crew, just in case we, we pick up some extra ships. This is something we're going to be paying for while we're out and about. Let's grab that. And I am somewhat tempted. Sure, let's grab an extra 100 supplies as well. There we go. That should be enough to carry us for quite some ways. Operations Center increases the command point recovery by 250 when it's sold on the, on the uh, flagship. Escort package. Assault package. Augmented dry field. Now that one's amazing. Heavy armor. Ooh. You've got some nice high tech fighters there. Equipped with dual. Atropos class torpedoes and a top notch shield generator. The Trident is perhaps the most feared of all bombers. Its effectiveness is somewhat limited by its low top speed and demanding logistical profile. Right now, we've only got long bows. The weapon, a thousand damage. Only 500 to shields, but two. Thousand to armor, and then a thousand to hull. Don Don Duck, have a nice sleep, mate. Thanks for dropping by, though. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Have I confessed everything in legal organs? No. We're already... Well, actually... Actually, our suspicion has gone back down to none because we bought regular surprise, uh, supplies and crew. <sighs> All right, sure. <laughs> Medium suspicion. Balls. <laughs> 